even if you were kind of like copying the the process, your images are all going to be different. And so right. you're going to end up with your own. Right. It's always going to be your own. That's what's so amazing about it is it becomes so authentic so quickly. Yeah. And it and that makes it really satisfying. Hey, everyone. I'm Tammy Sallenberger, the author of The One Inside, 30 Days to Your Authentic Self. This podcast is for anyone curious about who they are, the different parts of themselves, and for those who want to connect with their true self. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm super excited today to have Teresa Salzberg on the podcast to talk about visual art journaling. I've been so excited for this conversation. My parts are like, I want to know all the things and I want to start doing all the things. And so I am super excited to talk. Teresa is a level two trained IFS therapist. Welcome to the podcast. I never say that, but hi. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much, Tammy. It's so great to be here. I've also been looking forward to talking with you. And I think we've had, I've had such weird things come up. Like I think the first time we were going to meet, it was Valentine's Day and I had to go to jury duty. <laughs> That's right. that. So it's just been kind of silly. So it, it's just nice to, oh, hey, we're finally able to to chat, which is lovely. It Thanks is. It me. is. You're welcome. And I think people <laughs> don't sort of realize all that goes into, I mean, we have sent probably hundreds of emails back and forth. I know. And even today we were like trying to make sure we had the time right. We're like, we're going to do this no yeah, matter what. We're going to make this happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's great. Great yeah, to well, be thank, here. Thank yeah, you. good, good. Well, tell everybody <laughs> where you are in the world and uh, yeah. what time zone you're in and why we have time zone problems. <laughs> exactly. So I am in um, Felton, California, which people might not know that specific little town. It's um, right outside of Santa Cruz in the Santa Cruz Mountains. So I'm in the Bay Area. We're about an hour and a half uh, south of San Francisco. And um, commuting distance quote unquote, it's a kind of a long commute, but I did that commute for many years um, to Silicon Valley. <clears throat> oh, wow. me. So in a former, my former career was doing training and learning and development and all that for, um, for high tech companies. And then I became, I was a coach at that time. And then I became a therapist. So did you ask me already about looking at my window or is that the next question? I, I don't know, but it's definitely the next question. <laughs> what do you see when you look out your nearest window? <laughs> so that all being said, I'm so just grateful that I get to look out at just green, mm. especially now because because in California, we only get rain during the winter and mm. spring up into spring. And then it stops and we have a drought the entire year. It never, ever rains in the summer. So it's, it's like having a, a, a drought. And so the plants we have here have to be able to survive that. But interestingly, it's extremely green right now. And this is my backyard. Mm. And I was just... Um, we have about half an acre and we have, we're on a hillside. So the downstairs looks out at our neighbors. There's some um, redwoods and giant oaks and um, some green in our yard. Our dogs don't let us keep it that um, done <laughs> since they have a lot of toys and stuff out there. But my dog Bodie runs around out there. So it's a lovely spot. Aww. Um, I can't imagine looking out because I live in New, ha- New Hampshire, which is on the other side of the country. I can't imagine uh-huh. looking out my window and seeing redwoods. I mean, I'm like, that's got to be so amazing. Yeah, redwoods are incredible. And they're so just crazy huge. <laughs> and they, come, they, they they grow in stands. So we have a, a couple of stands on our, our property. Oh. Yes. And then during the fires in 2020, we actually evacuated. We had a fire kind of in each direction. And I was teaching kids, or I was um, at a practicum with kids at an elementary school in the valley um, up from me. And we were doing a lot of kind of metaphor work about how the redwoods re regrow because they keep their root system underground and they're connected and they communicate. And so they, they grow, they regrow even if they go through a fire. And so about 20 families lost their homes. This is Boulder Creek, California. So any of your listeners know about it. They're going to know kind of what I'm referring to. And yeah, it was just really interesting becoming a therapist during COVID, during the fires, uh, doing the career change during that time was really a lot and very educational. What happened or whatever you feel comfortable sharing that you yeah. decided to go from a coach to a therapist and then how is IFS involved in in that story? You know, the corporate environment just never felt 
right for me. So I was a coach, but then in companies, they will hire out for internal coaches because you're internal. So you're like part of the family, you know, so I, I really wanted to do more coaching and deeper work with people. And I kind of always had that drive and you and I'll, I'm sure talk about the Enneagram in a little bit. Mm -hmm. but if anybody's familiar, I'm an Enneagram type four. Okay. So I go, I go deep. I really do. And I want to, and I've, I've been doing my own personal development for as long as I can remember just reading on my own and doing my own work. And um, it was something that, you know, I kind of knew I wanted to do in my twenties and then my thirties and my forties. And with the cost of living here, it, I just was never able to kind of make that jump. And then, so I had supported my husband through a career change and then he was able to do that for me about five years ago. So awesome. I love yeah. That. I feel really lucky to be able to do that, to have yeah. done that. Yeah. And then what about IFS? How did you, yeah. yeah how'd you come to find IFS? As a coach uh, there, I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of this, but there was, there was, I think it was a part of um, voice dialogue. If you're familiar with voice dialogue. Yeah. And there was like a coaching um, seminar. I remember taking about like, like the, the team at the table and it was about, it was parts work basically. And I'd always kind of been interested and I'd looked at IFS, but at that time, probably because I wasn't going full on into therapy and it maybe seemed a little more therapeutic to me at the time. I didn't, I read the book, I read his books and I thought it was really fascinating, but I never kind of like dove in that deep. But then um, I went to JFK University. I did the holistic program here. And one of my colleagues was a, a certified um, IFS um, practitioner and she was getting her, her LMFT. So when I talked to her and learned a little bit more about it, I really kind of was like, wow, this sounds so amazing. And, you know, she'd bring it up in our course discussions and things like that and how amazing parts work is. So I ended up doing my level one, um, the same time I was finishing my master's for counseling and I finished both in December, 2020. So it's interesting. A lot of people have said like, oh, that's really cool that you had your IFS um, level one done when, when you started being a therapist. Cause, cause they're right. I was able to weave it in like from the beginning and grow with it is how I kind of look at it. You were on this journey, like all of these, all these things happen from grad school on. And then at some point you, something must've happened with expressive arts therapy or something with art that, that, drew you to it in some way yeah absolutely so I have I have loved art since I was since as long as I can remember I mean I had the most like crayons of any kid ever and I would just sit in color and my mom would would joke around she's like you always had to get the new box with, that had the point like the sharpener wasn't good enough you know what I'm saying yeah oh yeah <laughs> the new crayon points I mean you can never recreate that without a sharpener exactly exactly so that was that was my my um early obsession with art supplies and <laughs> being picky about them. But um, so I, I really wanted, you know, I remember because people said, Oh, what did you want to be when you were, when you grew up or something? And I remember I had said art teacher and I studied uh -huh. art all, you know, I always was doing the art, art stuff and studied art. And then by, by the time I got to um, college, I think I thought that being an English major was more practical, which just cracks me up, <laughs> right? And in a way it was, I went to a liberal arts school. So I ended up, um, I almost majored in art, but I was honestly like really kind of intimidated by, um, I mean, art in, especially at, at, a, at a college level is a lot of almost like judging what you're, you know, you're being graded for mm. creativity, you know? And so- yeah. And there were some intimidating um, girls from a certain sorority <laughs> in mm. the art program. So my parts at that time, I decided to do a minor, actually. So, um, but, and so I always, you know, I never, I felt like too, even in high school also, I was always learning the nuts and bolts of, of art and, and didn't really ever have a chance to be expressive with it. And I was kind of aware of that. So it's like, I wanted to do art on my own, but I didn't really have that behind me of like, I'm not really sure what I would do on my own without looking at something or, you know, a photograph or whatever, however I was trained in such a rote way. Yeah. And so I kind of, especially in in my business years, just 
I was so busy and my commute was like three hours a day, you know, I just didn't have time for, yeah, for much of else. And then when COVID hit, you know, and actually this was like a little bit after, I have to say that my mom passing away when I was um, in 2009. So when I, you know, when I was kind of, there's something that happens when you lose a parent where your trajectory of I have all the time in the world doesn't stay that way anymore. Do you know what I mean? And it's a very profound, intense experience. And so that that was the time that that I really committed to. I'm I want to change my career and become a therapist for real. And that was in the back of my mind too of like I want to do my art no matter what that looks like. And I almost was aware that I wanted to find what that what 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 is my medium? What is my what is the thing I do? Because I had a lot of interests. And when I was younger, I really, I love doing portraits and, um, you know, just drawing, but there were other things that I'm like, I haven't really even experienced. So during COVID, I had more time as a lot of us did to take some online courses. And the course I took um, was in mixed media art journaling. And I realized, oh, mixed media, that's what a Gemini with Gemini rising, <laughs> which I have. That's what I need because I don't have to choose. I get to do all the things. And so um, from there, I took some other, you know, online courses and just got really more comfortable with that um, way of working and especially the art journaling parts and mixed media and art journaling, mixed media type art journaling involves a lot of layers. And that can be really amazing and fun for, for the expression part. So it still took me a while you know, I had to sort of learn some nuts and bolts before I felt like, again, I was free to just kind of express me. And I think that's a really good thing for any of us to keep in mind. Um, so I did um, a course, a nine month long course in expressive arts therapy. And what that does is it prepares you if you want to become certified as a registered expressive arts therapist. And expressive arts is holistic and that means you have the somatic and the mindfulness and all your senses involved in movement and drama therapy and writing and all the things. You see, that's a theme for me. <laughs> don't leave don't leave it out. Bring it all in. Um, the and then four theme too, probably. <laughs> I have a lot of seven in me too. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So I just kept at it though, because I was still kind of frustrated because at, at first I think you have to almost like follow really closely what other artists are doing to learn the craft. And I think some people get a little bit maybe frustrated, like that's not really mine. And, and should I be copying that person? But instructors want you to do that because that's how you learn almost like the skills. So I compare it a lot to like, you know, learning the structure of music so you can then improvise or learning the basics of how to cook so that you can then throw things together. And I can't, still can't do that, <laughs> but a lot of people can to make something that's more from you, but to have that um, knowledge that like, oh, I need to learn a little bit of structure. Because with expressive arts, it's like, oh, throw that all away and just make marks. But the more you have some vocabulary, you can kind of express even more, in my opinion. Yeah. So how would you, can we jump into how you help people use this layering and the mixed media when they're working with parts and in their systems. Totally. Yes. So I also had the, I, I feel like in, on our path, we just kind of find the right person at the right time. So there's an instructor and I, I'll, I'll um, include all these links. If your listeners want to know about the, you know, even the expressive arts program I did. And then this person I'm about to mention, um, she does a process called soul pages. Her name is Rakafet Hadar. She's um, from Israel. And I did a facilitation program with her for about nine months. It was weird. It was the exact same time as that other, other program. And I had just, I had found her book and she was doing this, this process so beautifully. And she, and she incorporates voice dialogue. She's also an art therapist. So the parts piece had already really come in as part of that process. And then she encourages us to bring in whatever it is we love and care deeply about because you can kind of apply that process to so many different types of um, topics or interests so there's somebody in the group I'm in right now who's really interested in 12-step recovery so it's like oh she could do a she could do a program with with um, 
with expressive arts. And then, you know, the war started um, in Israel when Rafet was teaching us and she was, her assistant taught us a lot because she was out with groups of people doing trauma recovery with them, doing um, soul pages, doing this kind of um, work. And so it's amazing, right? And it's very, very heal. It's healing while being so fun and enjoyable. I mean, that's what's amazing about it, right? So tell me what that means. Like she was using these soul books and that was helping with healing. So what does that mean? What does that look like? How can we use that with our parts and getting to know our systems? One of the most important aspects of expressive arts healing is so I also did a trauma certification and complex trauma is my main focus with my clients and that's the healing that I that I focus on is relational con- complex trauma healing so when you think of to um, the body keeps the score for example and all that work about how we carry healing in our bodies creative work is actually right brain work and it's about imagery and connecting images and connecting all those and and then we eventually weave it together with the storytelling verbal side, right? So a lot of us know that, that, um, kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of that framework. And so the power behind this is connected to that. And so the, the process of the art making, the process of making marks, the body, the, in the embodied experience of it, that in itself is healing. And then you're working with symbols and I'm going to connect this back to Jungian work too you really put your thinking parts aside you're in that experience and for example when so i'm going to go through the layers for a second this might help too so <clears throat> what we do and we we learn to do this as facilitators you come up with an intention you come up with okay what what is this topic going to be you don't have to do that you can go and work from your own stuff but when you're especially in our group you have kind of a, an intention and a topic we often do a guided visualization which gets you in that state of meditative, embodied, I am the bird, for example. And she, she really emphasizes metaphor too. Um, so if we're doing um, healing the, so I, I'm, I'll talk about this later, but I'm working through the parts of the Enneagram as healing approaches. So one of the ones could be uh, the helper that might, the part two, the type two that might go to extreme and become codependent or overly smothering and caretaking, right? So for example, I might have like a bird um, helping a, like learning to fly might be the metaphor for that. And so you'd kind of brainstorm what that might look like. You might even have someone do a guided visualization of you are, you are the bird, (laughs) you know, you are in, you you know, what, what messages do you need to, to learn something new? Whatever that is, you kind of work backwards from that. And again, you can do your own parts too. And I'm going to talk about how I do that just all the time, just as like a cool thing that I keep an art journaling going for that too. So there's kind of two ways you can approach it. So if you're doing that, um, the intention and all that, there's the first layer is going to be a background. And that is like probably some watercolor or just something that's more free form that can have meaning to, excuse me, too. You can connect to the intention and say, what color would you have? Would you choose? And don't think about it. Just let your let your hand move to that color of maybe independence versus the other side might be um, over helping or something. You know, I'm just kind of trying to keep to this rough metaphor. And then you can do different things like oh, blend those together, or there can be all kinds of things depending on what you want that you know what your intention is. Collage is the main focus of this work. So choosing those images, again, it's really about putting those thinking, narrating, self-like parts aside, getting into self, letting yourself choose, because you've done that guided visualization. So you're in this different mind space and you're choosing those images. You don't even know why. So if people have done um, soul collage, And I'm a soul collage facilitator too. It's very similar to that process. In that sense, you're making separate cards. In this sense, we're making a whole spread that's going to combine. So you're in soul um, collage, you choose those images. It's almost like your subconscious mind is choosing them. And they would say in that work, you might even want to push one away 
that's the one you should choose. <laughs> you know, that one wants to be there. Okay. And then you go into another layer. And this was this was what was kind of missing because I was doing a lot of this on my own. And when I met Rockefeller and did her course, the integration that she does to integrate these um, images into so that it feels like one connected piece. And you've probably seen pieces like this. So you use you. So if you have like a, if you think of like, okay, you have a collage and you put it on a page and it kind of ends and then you just see the background. And I've given you um, an example of the progression of one that I made. So you can kind of see this in real time. You extend the line. Oh, there's a bridge there. I'm going to extend the line across the page and then I'm going to extend that color over here. And then I'm going to use my own doodling and, and whatever my mark work is whatever images I want to create. And so everybody, and then you create your own language with that and you're just weaving it together. There might be words. And then you continue to add whatever needs to be there. You can in this also, so for parts work, and we did this with voice dialogue, have these parts, these images speak to each other, mm. right? So this is a really important part of that. So we work, we would work a lot with protectors because voice, voice dialogue is very similar, right? In lots of ways, we would work a lot with the inner child part. So for us, that would be exiles and we could really do some writing and you could do writing on any layer of this. I do writing often as the very first layer and then I paint over it because I love it that it integrates and you can see the writing through it, through the watercolor and stuff. Something I just love to do. You can have your parts have dialogue back and forth. You know, right, you could write with your right hand and your left hand when you do that. You can go through the actual, you know, the IFS questions that we use. What are you trying to do to help me? You know, um, what do you, what do you need from me to feel safe? Things like that to really, you know, I've done inner, I've done like an inner critic spread with a group that I've led. And that's a really important one. And we had some really amazing learning from, from that particular, um, protector that we were working with because we were trying to do some playful stuff over here and then we had the inner critic over here we did an image all of our playful we did the playful ones with like little blobs of color and we cut them out and put them on I mean this you could do whatever you know all of our playful ones had these like this like really worried look on their face like all that we drew their expressions and we were just like how interesting we needed to work a little bit more with the critic Mm -hmm. right to bring it mm -hmm. together a little it was just really fascinating like no matter what you do there you are and you get to just keep working with whatever has come up and so then the the final layer can be like oh what what message might I write across here if I, you know if I could title this what would it be um what is what are the messages I do a lot of the um complex trauma healing so in a lot of the things I'm trying to do is also elicit reparenting types of things or what message in this case with the helper what message do you want to hear from your nurturing self and what what are you going to what you can write that as like the final you know piece to take with you things like that so it's just there's so much richness that you can glean from this I think you're you're working on an unconscious different right brain level so I know I'm, I'm I just said a lot and I, I want to um see if you want to if you have questions on that but I also want to talk about how I work with this just on my own so you don't even have a have to have a prompt or the group or anything but I'll get to that when you're ready love that okay so thank you for the pause because I just you just you did say a lot and I loved it and I feel like um part of me is like I want to take a class like I want to like <laughs> because I think I am such oh, a word person that. and so I I do know that when I have done any sort of art or make collages because I actually really like making collages. It does seem like it. It does. It's something different. It's something yeah. I don't know. Like maybe something like a protector softens in me, or like I'm I'm accessing I'm accessing something different or in a different way. Um, and I've yeah. never thought about this layering. And then actually, I'm hearing you say that we can we're connecting to our bodies. We're connecting inside. We're connecting to our parts, mm -hmm. and they're really letting them choose. And then, and then it's not just pieces. It's not just the parts. It's not just all these random pieces of colors or papers or images. Then mm -hmm. there's, there tends to be a oneness, which I love that, right? There tends to be some oneness or a, a theme or something 
And then you end with self, right? The self writing a, <laughs> yeah. writing a sweet note. And uh, yeah, that's just beautiful. That's incredible. And and the way you just described it, you added to it. I, I hadn't even thought about that. You end in self. Yes. You, you kind of bring, you know, you're in that, that centeredness and, and your parts are kind of, they're in a different place a little bit. They've shifted almost on their own. I mean, that's, what's fascinating about this work and, um, the instructor I worked with and I've, I've always, like I said, I love Jungian concepts. She always talks about, um, she calls it magical coincidence, but it's really, and it's really about synchronicity. There are so many amazing just coincidences that happen. And so that the groups I've worked with, she'll be like, I can't believe that I just like grabbed this thing and it was exactly what I was looking for. Or, you know, this thing connected over here, you know, it's so just really amazing. It's almost because you feel like you're working in that other way. Yeah. And then the, the other thing I wanted to say is you do not have to have one speck of artistic anything in your in you to do this. Um, and that's the beauty of the collage too, yeah. that you that you are, you know, bringing an image. You don't have to kind of sit there and go, "How do I draw a <laughs> you know this complicated thing I want to express?" But the cool thing is, you can make those images your own because once you have them down there, you can keep kind of drawing and extending and painting over them. And then you, and but it's like a playground, a background that you get to expand from. But you put aside that like part that says I'm making art you put it right. aside you let yourself play you know you even just use your left hand like we do that within a lot of the inner child stuff because you don't want to you're not trying to make a finished piece there's no trying or efforting it's 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 expression we want you to be able to express you I love that do you think that you do you ever have to work with the parts of us that are like but wait where I'm not supposed to draw outside the lines like I this is how I learned how to do art or I don't I can't do art I believe this about myself so I sit down yeah. in art class as an adult and I'm like I have I have I already have all these parts that I'm bringing to the table just about the art <laughs> totally absolutely and <clears throat> excuse me you bring up you bring up a really good point sort of on both ends of the spectrum that it can be harder for people that that know art because they kind of almost have to put that aside in a certain way. And then, like you said, there can also be, you know, we can look at these as parts too. And we, in the facilitator program, we did a lot of work on our inner artist parts or inner, you know, inner creative parts. And one of them is, um, it's called the magical child in kind of vo like a voice dialogue speak. Um, the one that we carry with us as, as kids that is always, in us because if you think about when you're, we were younger we could just just scribble over there to pay and ex you express you don't even think about it right so this is really about in ifs in our ifs world and I, it gives it power i think like let's let's ask the critic to step aside let's ask even the one that that is worried about the label of artists to, to maybe watch over here mm. you know and and the cool yeah. thing about a journal is you don't have to show it to anybody that's what's so awesome about it it becomes your it's your private container you get to play in here and then the beauty too about layers is that you can make just what your critic might come over here and go that's really kind of ugly and but you're just like i don't care because i'm going to do another layer over it and by the time you get to the the layers and layers it just becomes this you know what like in, it's it's like all the layers are peeking through and showing through and you're sculpting and shaping something that again isn't about one layer that looked like this over here do you know what I mean do you know what yeah, I mean yeah. you're building something I love also that you can do one it sounds like instead of you know some people will say like okay well these are the parts I'm working on in therapy or this is the parts I'm really like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really noticing in my life right now and I'm really paying attention to and then some people can you know I write I write those down um but some people yeah. can draw them or like yeah. go on google and find a, a visual of them um mm -hmm. but this is a way that you really could represent them or you could have them represent themselves on the yes. page and be really creative about how the parts really want to represent themselves. And then maybe even how other parts respond to them. Like that could all be, you know, on one page. Exactly. Yes. And um, I want to find, I don't think I have it right at my, I, I keep, I, I have like a million journals going, so I can't just grab it, but I'll, I want to, I'll share, especially this one 
image with you or spread with you of exactly what you're talking about where I was even like, I was doing something and then I had my journal next to me and I was like really wound up about <laughs> something, you know, and just this part came up of just like annoyed or angry or something. And I just literally was, I just sketched almost like little, little stick people. I often will imagine, um, and I'm sure a lot of your listeners do this too, where your parts are like sitting around a table, like I was mentioning before, or I like to have them around like a campfire or something outside. So um, I had just did, I'd done a little bit of writing for each of those. Um, and then imagine self, my, myself in the, as self in the middle. And I ended up um, just like you said, expanding from there and ending up d doing kind of a background, but then finding, finding images that just didn't even necessarily even kind of make sense with what, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying mm -hmm. is they just kind of, okay, that wants to be there and that wants to be there. And I had kind of imagined this, one of them was, had like wings or something. And later I put that on there and then, but what's really interesting is those later layers, you know, when I was adding, you kind of add more images at some point if it feels right. It ended up being like underwater with the water coming up over the other way, big, wow. big fire in the middle it shifted and moved though in ways I hadn't expected. There was like coral under there. And then I had this image of um, like, it was like a mythological, some kind of mermaid, but somebody was kind of like trying, a, a male figure was trying to like grab her foot or something. And then what, so you get that all down and then you're like, I was really aware of the depth and the layers, literally the layers. Yeah. Wow. Coming in, in a different way. Mm. And it was it really, I was like, Ooh, that's really, that's really cool and interesting because again, we get to invite in our, um, unconscious minds and our collective, the tap into the collective unconscious too. Beautiful. I've had two, it's weird. Like, I don't know if you have themes in a day when you're with clients, <laughs> but two people yesterday were like, we're tapping into an exile that they're like, I can't even call it an exile because that's my pure joy. <laughs> and I have to learn to to discern that and temper it because my narcissistic ex takes advantage of it. But but when she was working with that that part, she's like, they're not suffering. They're not carrying all the pain. They're my pure joy. And I was like, that's fascinating. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and, yeah. and another client in the same day, a couple hours later was like, yeah, this is this this part does not have an age it's timeless it's it's been with me for it's been here forever it's part of my legacy and i was like I was just talking to so if you if you think of connecting to the union the the collective unconscious and and our individual it, it's working it's like dream work on a page really is what it kind of ends up feeling like mm, yeah that's it's beautiful pretty, it's pretty amazing so what do you do on your own? Because it sounds like you can do this in a class. I mean, it sounds like you can do this on your own a little bit too, but tell yeah. me about how you're doing it on your own and how the listeners can begin to do this on their own. Yeah, totally. So we were kind of, um, my my marketing, um, the, per the marketing person I work with and I were kind of talking about, just like you're saying, like how could people get started? And especially if they haven't maybe done this kind of work before, um, you can you can start really simply. And you can, you don't have to have a million art materials either. And that's what's great. You can start with some uh, collage images and you can grab magazines and old books and things like that, that we pull, that you can pull from maybe just a set of watercolors. They don't have to be fancy, a uh, black pen, you know, the, a pen that can kind of write over the top of, you know, like a Sharpie type of thing. You can have a, a pretty basic set of just materials to start with. Um, and just even having kind of a sense of just those, I was looking up layers the other day of like, oh, what? Do, how do other mixed media art, art journaling people look at layers? And it was like, oh, um, three of them. <laughs> the first layer, the middle layer, and the last layer. It doesn't have to be complicated. And so like you said, and um, a lot of my clients do this too, you can take right your right your written journal can sort of start evolving or morphing into um a visual one and that's what happened with me because i was i i always kept writing even when i wasn't doing as much visual stuff 
And in my program at JFK, we, we they would invite us to do a ton of art therapy type stuff and collage in our in our classes. And I, it's funny, you can look through my journals and you can see me just starting to add color, starting to add shapes, starting. So you don't even have to worry about this whole thing. I mean, that can be like, oh, I want to learn more about that. You could start. There's something about even just, like I said, a stick figure or just whatever images or colors or shapes, you know, because when, when we start to work with a part, we'll, we'll say, we'll ask the client, right? Like, what texture or color or shape do you notice, right? Do you notice mm -hmm. you're starting to get into that more imagery part of you almost? So, we, so not even worrying about making, you know, but just even starting to evolve your, your, um, a written journal in that direction can be really a cool way to kind of just get into that mindset a little bit more. Does that make sense? It totally does. It's like, uh, like adding, adding doodling. It's like mm -hmm. adding, do adding, adding, doodling. <laughs> adding doodling yeah, yeah. and then, and saying then that for sentence, add, but, adding yeah yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then and then like I said collage is so accessible and and you don't even have to worry about like oh I don't get that part about the integrating part doesn't matter make collage you know what I mean just I'm gonna do well, a page and make some collage right and I like the idea of saying like just what pictures are drawn to me like flip through a magazine get a free magazine from your library or sort of they have sometimes we'll have like those stacks of like just free magazines you can take yeah and then you can just like sort of go through and just whatever whatever you're drawn to or whatever you're not drawn to and just tear it out and then yeah. that would be kind of a place to start absolutely and and that's what I think um is a great activity to do and then you just kind of have a stash of things you've already grabbed and then when you're ready, you just kind of like, oh, this one, this one. I knew I chose that for a reason. <laughs> this needs to be here. Right. So yeah. absolutely. Yes. And and the and the writing part of it at any stage, especially with our IFS work, I think is so important. Like, what does this part want to say? Like, I'm going to write like I had those, you know, mapped out and I was just writing like, what what do they want to say here? You know, and then you add a layer and then there might be you want to have more of a conversation between between them and even the image I had had because I've, I've made an image for for self right a number of times you don't have to include it but that's evolved over time too I'm like oh now it has a she has a mandala in the middle of her she used to have her head kind of covered and she was turned away now she's a plant <laughs> she's a, right wow. hmm. So, hmm. yeah I love that and so are you using tell me how you're using the Enneagram oh yeah I mean, you talked about it a little bit, but I want to be like specific. Yeah. So the Enneagram is, yeah, exactly. The Enneagram is part of my past coaching life too. I learned it a, a while ago and love it. I've always loved it. I did a lot of coursework um, with, a, with a coaching program I did, which was like an integral coaching program. So probably starting in like, I don't know, it was like 10, 2010 or something like that. So I've always loved incorporating it in. And I had a therapist I was the client of a therapist who would also use the Enneagram in her work. So it's just like a very, a tool that I love, which I know a lot of us do. And I've just for years now have been really um, kind of just enamored with, with, I, I really want to make a container of, um, you know, especially for a course and eventually a book that I'm writing of following different parts of self maybe a little bit more deliberately and my in my mindset it's like I know a lot of people um it's like oh find your Enneagram type and yes that's I remember a, a, an instructor of ours used to say well that's your center of gravity is whatever one that you <clears throat> excuse me relate to the strongest in my mind I look at it as a whole that all the nine parts are part of us and so even if the one that doesn't show up for you, it shows up for you the least, which for me is type eight, <clears throat> excuse me, I consider that a part that is also extremely important to work with, in my opinion, mm. because it's a disowned part or it's a shadow. Like to me, I'm just, I just kind of look at it a little bit more holistically since as you notice, hol holistic <laughs> thinking is kind of one of Same. my yeah. things I do. But um, so I really had started kind of looking at the Enneagram holistically and then how could I maybe offer, you know, it's similar to the the voice dialogue work because we would, oh, let's look at the magical inner child and then the um, the hurt, um, vulnerable inner child, sorry, the vulnerable inner child's like our exile, you know, so they kind of weave together. But within each Enneagram type, 
um, in there, you know, and so the Enneagram Institute has those amazing levels of development of each type. So if you think about that protector and how they might show up and then, okay, who are they trying to protect? That's the wound of each of these types. I really see the Enneagram as almost like encompassing, almost like the possibilities out there for us as how we might show up and how, what might be stronger or be strong for each of us. So with, in each of those little containers, we can kind of work with that aspect as we go around the nine types. And there's also lots of somatic pieces in there with mindfulness and things like that. So that's kind of how, you know, I look at it. I, I've looked around to see if anyone else sort of looks at it that way. And some people are like, no, it doesn't, maybe not, but it, it really makes sense to me. It's <laughs> just like for my way of thinking. So. So yeah. you talked about, you have, um, you have a free uh, booklet or something that people can, yes. people can get. So tell me about that. Yes. So we are going to provide you with a link for your listeners to, um, to grab a, a free resource that's really about how to get started with this, what materials you might need, um, you know, how just what the layers kind of how they show up, you know, all the things we've been talking about. And we just thought it would be a nice way to kind of have, you know, a start and just kind of where they can start playing because that's the goal. Like we don't want anyone to feel like it's, oh, it's just, it's too much. I don't even know what to do or where to start. Kind of like yeah. you were asking. I love that. So the Enneagram would be a place to start, right? Kind of if you know your type, if you don't know your type, that's fine. But if you know your type, that would be a good place to start just being like curious yeah. about that type and then good doing point. some of the art around that type. That yeah, like absolutely. A good place to start. Yeah. And, and the Enneagram part is, um, it's kind of like a fuller course and a fuller um, offering that I, that I, I'm putting together as like a, almost like a, a longer engagement of a course that will come out. Um, and, and in the meantime, though, there's so much we can do right on our own. And um, we have a Facebook group, too, that I want to I'm going to talk to my um, my marketing person about maybe we could have um, a group that we could also invite them to. The one right now is for a course that people had already signed up for. But I think it would be really fantastic almost to have like a specific IFS um, Facebook group. Right. So that we can kind of help each play. other. Yeah. Play. Yeah. Play. Exactly. That's what I really want. Well, and to go back to what you were saying originally, if we're like, I have no idea what you're talking about and I have no idea how to start. If there is a Facebook group or if there was a place where people could see what you're talking about, yeah. then maybe it's like, okay, well, I could kind of copy that. But even if I try to copy it, I'm going to make something on my own, but it's a place to yes. start. It's just sort it's of like the beginning of the menu or like beginning, like basic cooking, like basic art could be, I'm just going to copy you. But then mm -hmm. I know that I'm, I'm going to create my own thing. So I can copy you and I can start with like my critic or I can start yeah. with my Enneagram type or I can start yes. with just sort of the parts of me that are like, I don't know what I'm doing and I hate art. <laughs> Absolutely. That's so true that you start there. You're like, oh, I can't do this. Let's do a spread on that. On that. Yeah. Yeah. We got to start with you that know? part. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah, you, you make so many good points there that it's, and, and what's interesting is in this case, even if you were kind of like copying the the process, your images are all going to be different. Right. And so right. you're going to end up with your own. Right. It's always going to be your own. That's what's so amazing about it is it becomes so authentic so quickly. Yeah. And it and that makes it really satisfying. And that's the piece I was actually saying to you that I felt was missing for me. Where's my expression? You know, mm -hmm. every mark we make, every image we choose and and work with it's it comes from us you know and even if you we tried to kind of like copy each other stuff it would still look like yours yeah I love that I love that's that. the beauty of it that's great and so you uh tell me about so you have a course coming up and a book coming up so tell me yeah. about that and tell people how we can find that stuff yeah absolutely so um the link that we will provide you will we'll have all that information we just kind of decided to put it kind of in one one Perfect. place and Perfect. then you can you could join my uh, mailing list and then I'll I'll be having I have a um the the course it's actually going to be kind of in the format of a coaching group in a way so that we can you know I feel like I feel like with complex trauma healing it's about 
a community, right? And the art journaling um, groups that I've been in and learned with, it's like we become this this group where we support each other and you don't have to share your work, as I said, but we you become vul you become vulnerable in this positive way. So those parts of you get used to sharing that in a safe container. And it just becomes a really, I think that's part of how you develop your muscle as an expressive person. You know what I mean? That's part of it. So there's a, a coaching group that will be coming up um, in the next couple of months. And then I'm working on a book that follow and that course and my book follow the Enneagram types and then working within each one of them and each one bringing in a complex trauma healing point of, like I said, reparenting or working with um, fight, flight, freeze, fawn, because those all show up in the Enneagram types. It's amazing how these overlap, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, follow. I agree. I love that. And I love that. I love that they, yeah. these systems are all saying the same thing or they, they work do. together really well. Yeah. Yes. And I've seen, that. I actually saw that you had a guest on and you and that she works with Enneagram and IFS and, and that you, you have an interest in that lately too. And it's fantastic. I think it makes sense, right? That the deepest models we have, you know, and the chakra system maps right over the top of it too, um, to each one. And even the parts of our, the C's, the eight C's, I was like, oh, each one of these Enneagram types are focusing on one of these, you know, um, like type two, compassion, you know, type eight, courage, you know, so it's just amazing to me. Um, it's kind of the way my brain works. I like to just kind of put all the pieces together, but yeah. um, hope, you know, and I just, I just really want to, I want other people to experience this work slash play because it is just so freeing and it has really helped me heal genuinely on my own from I was talking to you about when we before we um, started chronic migraines you know we had the fires here we've all gone through COVID we all um, you know I feel like we're still healing getting back out into the world coming out of isolation you know as a as a whole community and it's just such a way to just really in a fun gentle I mean just being able to be creative right it's like such an open door for just that that joy having fun right I love it having fun while healing right can you yeah can you imagine <laughs> I know yeah I love it so yeah. Teresa thank you so much this has been so interesting and I'm really curious about um playing playing with art and playing with um and just seeing what comes up so I really invite awesome. listeners to see even if it's just doodling while they're like thinking about their parts or naming their parts yes. or writing down their parts and just start doodling and see what happens. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. And I encourage Thank people you. to reach out to you and um, you can find everything about Teresa on these links and yeah, to reach out and, and join all the things that you're doing. It's super exciting. Thank you so much, Tammy. I really appreciate being here and sharing, sharing all this with you and your audience. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you like this episode, please subscribe, rate, like, all the things. My book is available at your favorite independent bookstore or all the places books are available. You can also visit my website, TammySallenberger.com, where you can download a free meditation on getting to know your should parts. You know there's parts of you who remind you of what you should be doing. They sound a bit critical at times. Yes, we all have them. You can follow me at IFS Tammy on Instagram and Twitter and the One Inside Facebook page. I'm so grateful for Jack Reardon, who created the new music. Jack is a graduate of Derek Scott's IFS Stepping Stone program. Thanks, Jack, for getting me. And to you, thanks for listening.